What's up guys? Chad, Adler Farm. Random chores and farm vlog video today. Things first, we gotta address the gate. So in the last video, I think I may have said a 12 foot gate from Tartar a couple of times. I picked this up at Atwoods, but it's a Tartar gate. Uh, we're good friends with Atwoods. We're actually working with them on some stuff. But anyway, it's a 16 foot gate. The 12 foot gate, I do have one. Whew, did you guys get as dizzy as I did? The 12 foot gate is way back. I can't even do it. Way back there. 16 foot gates up front. And what I wanna do, well, first we gotta get you guys leveled up here. Uh, what I wanna do, can you see that? So I've got kind of a Y entrance right here. Here, let's just take you guys with me. So I've got kind of a Y entrance right here. And I put some boards up just to see how it looks. But if you guys didn't know, treated lumber is in short supply right now because apparently everybody's home and they all wanted to build privacy fences and decks and barbed wire fences and front gate entrances on the property. So, welcome to the show, Cabela. Anyway, what I'm wanting to do is just box this off a little bit so people can't get, you know, in through there. The gate video, this is where it was. And I liked it. However, when I pulled the front of my truck up to this gate, you guys know I rented a skid steer a couple of times. I brought the beefy boys back. Uh, you'll see that video if you haven't already. The nose of my truck into my gate. It's only 40 feet to the road. Well, if you got a 17 foot truck and a 17 foot trailer, give or take, the back end is too close to the road for my comfort. So what I did was, but this is 12 feet from here to there, 12 feet from there to there. So by giving myself that extra room, when I pull in now with my truck, I've got almost 10 feet between the back of whatever rig I'm hauling and the road. Um, it's still not quite enough room for people to use it as like a turnaround. And, you know, if they do, they do. I'm not super worried about it. It's not a threat thing. It's just more of a, I don't want people using my drive. Um, I've already talked to my buddy and I'm gonna get some base rock brought in and I just don't want people pulling in there and peeling out to try and hurry and jump out on the road and do 55 miles an hour. Anyway, that's the reason for that. Long story short, one of the chores we're gonna do today is I'm gonna try and class this up a little bit. Class it up, you know. I wanna make this more attractive while also keeping people out and just not, you know, I mean, if somebody really wanted to, they can, they can get in. It's not, it's not like it's, you know, Fort Knox, but I would like to make it a little bit more difficult for somebody to just drive in. So, and I think it'll look good too, but. First things first, you guys have seen me screw boards in. You've seen me frame, you've seen all that. So I'm, I'm just gonna touch up the rest of the boards right here and you guys can watch that and fast forward and then i'll show you what i'm gonna do for the gaps in between because like i said there's a huge shortage on treated lumber so doing a traditional four board fence right here right now it's just not going to happen i can't find the lumber between two lows no i've got three lows and two home depots within about 45 minutes of me so just not going to mess with it i'm not going to compete with the contractor and get there at 5 a.m and uh all that good stuff i'd rather just do something different plus i think it'll be really pretty so Watch this.
guys think? I was gonna use field fence that we've got left over from the chicken coop or the chicken run, whatever you wanna call it, but I think these cattle panels look a lot better. They're far more sturdy. And if you get them in 16 foot lengths, I've cut all of mine down to eight because they're easier to move in the pickup. And I just cut them down at Atwoods. When I buy them, I just sit out in the parking lot. They know I do it. I just sit out in the parking lot and do it. Take my little DeWalt grinder, just out of frame there. Um, but anyway, I think they look really good. Um, I'll fix that post. I'll take the two-way latch off of there. I'll leave my driveway sensor because I like that it's kind of pointed at the space where a car is versus being on the post that points at the gate. Because if they're at your gate, it's, it's too late. I, I want that extra half second or two. You know, tactical advantage. This is a 12 foot, well, it's not 12 feet. You can see how much board hangs over off a 12 foot board. So it's 10 and a half ish. But what I'm gonna do is just take two sections of cattle panel. And you also wanna make sure they're running the right way. Um, it's over here, running the right way. I got the bottoms at the bottom. You wanna keep that universal just so in case there's a gap, it doesn't look too awkward. I got a little bit of overhang right here, but that's because even though the camera flattens this out, this is a huge slope, but I've built enough fences that what you wanna do with your fence is you always want the top to be level. And remember, this is a farm fence. So when I say level, I don't mean get out your level, your compass, your T-square, and your plumb line and level it out. <laughs> the more rustic it looks, the cooler. But you can see I've got cattle panel exposed under the bottom there and the bottom there, but that'll keep, I don't know, some critters in, some critters out. I don't know, don't care. I just think it looks pretty good. But anyway, let me finish this up right here. What I'm gonna do is I've got two shorter sections of cattle panel and I'm just gonna piece them together. You won't even be able to see the difference. But if you've got 16 footers, you can cut them down to fit. But I'm not gonna go drop 20 bucks for you know, uniformity. I'm also, you know, the grid, there's this side and this side. I'm also making sure the grid is on this side every time, you know, cause I just said uniformity doesn't matter. <laughs> but I do like the bottom to be the bottom, the top to be the top and the inside be the inside. So back this up here. Yes, the humidity is legit. The temperature's down, humidity legit. But the camera died while I was filming part of that, but man, this looks really, really good. Let me show you guys. I actually got the idea from Pinterest. But yeah, check this out, this looks so good. Well, I wanna show you the outside. Look how cool that looks. I'm probably still gonna trim off the uh, six by six rounds, but and the reason it's not flush or tucked back behind the pole is because I've got to leave room in case I need to adjust that barbed wire. But I may trim these off. I may not. If I do, I'll probably do something kind of sloping into the drive. I think that'd look really pretty. Pardon the mess there. Still got some scraps. Yep, there she is. And this is a 12 foot run. And because my camera got camera guide, because my camera died, you guys didn't see this. But what I did, I don't, I don't have 16 foot panels. I think I mentioned, or I'm not sure if I've mentioned yet. I don't bring home 16 foot panels cause I don't have a trailer. So I cut the 16 footers in the parking lot at Atwoods. And then I haul them home as eight footers. So I just piece them together. Nobody's going to see it. Nobody cares. If I wouldn't have pointed it out, you guys wouldn't even have known. But I may still just to clean it up a little bit. 
I might put some vertical tuba sixes right there. That's all these are. A tuba six and a regular old cattle panel. I'll put the link down below to one of the big box stores. But the cattle panel is pretty, pretty obvious. You guys know what those are. And this is where I had the old gate. And this is pretty cool. Uh, whatever that brand is, Woodloo, but they're solar powered. Makes a doorbell noise when somebody pulls in the yard. Uh, the only downside is, and I may just have to flip it over here, is now that the beefy boys are out here, set that off when they're at the fence right there. This fence, not this one, this one. So that's how sensitive it is. And there's a way to turn the sensitivity down, but you gotta take the whole back cover off and yeah, I don't have time for that. So a whole lot easier to just move it over here. Anyway, I think it turns out pretty good. But this is, let's see, 10, 20, 16, 20, 56. There you go. That's 56 feet across. It's a definite Y. And I remember when I set these posts, I was avoiding, it's right here behind the trash cans. I was avoiding that AT&T pylon or, uh, what do you call those things? Pylon? Pedestal. There you go. Pylons football. I was avoiding that and the cable. And then I set my fence just inside that tree, just enough to run the riding lawnmower between that gap so it was easy to mow. So from here to here is 56. From here to here is 36. From here to here is 16. And so on. 56, 36, 16. And I've got a little over 40 feet to pull in with a trailer behind me. So that's 17 feet on a truck length, plus however long the trailer is that you're hauling. And I've been working with my friends at Tartar and Atwoods, and I've got something special coming for this gate, as well as, oh, I think actually USPS just showed up. Hang on. So now I can do a push to open or a pull to open as well. Anyway, they sent me a sweet double-sided gate hinge. And that's actually going to go right back there. Don't zoom in on my hand. Oh, good grief. See the red gate? That's where the two-way is going. That's a little eight-foot tartar gate from Atwoods that we hung. And that's our four-board traditional farm fence the boys and I can sit on and watch the animals and all that good stuff. But that's where that's going to go. And then I've got another red gate. Way down yonder. That'll get one. I got another gate going in right here. Where Haas is right now. Haas. Anyway, that was super kind of Tartar to send over that two-way gate latch. They're worth their weight in gold after being on the farm for a while. Because I tell you what, these chains that they provide... Those are good if it's just like a front gate like this, but the beefy boys have already pressed up and tried to pop that chain off of there. And you know, it makes noise and they like doing that. So they like making noise and all that good stuff I don't want messing with. But that does it for today, I think. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I gotta show you guys something. Hang on, let's get the four wheeler. Still got them, all four. The reason they're in that little thing, whew, back up. The reason they're in that little pin. <laughs> noisy. Is somebody actually messaged me and said they wanted to look at them. And if they want to take one home, I want them in a the little pin. So 
we can catch them easier. Let me show you something. Gotta be real quiet, okay? We're gonna sneak up. Beef, what's up, buddy? There you are. I thought you were sleeping. I thought you were sleeping. All right, come here. Come here. Hey, you know you're super famous on the interweb everywhere. Everybody was real worried about you. They were, they were like, she got fleas, she got fleas. You know what? Some of y'all were right. She did, she did have a few fleas. Goodness, you put up with that? You're the boss here, you know. You can tell them to shh. Anyway, hey, let's show them. All right, see that right back there? It's a dog house with an $80 bed in it. No, wait. Ooh, see a spider web? That was kind of scary. Whoop, there. Oh, look out. Anyway, so that's the dog glue that she likes, but she actually prefers There's the inside of the coop, which is fine by me because I throw DTE in, DTE in here, and this is where all the chickens sleep, and this is where they lay their eggs, too. How you doing? Anyway, this is where they lay, even though nesting box. You can get mad all you want there. Use the box. Anyway, she kind of prefers this right here. I think because she's in here with all the chickens. What's it doing? Not gonna lay down for him, huh? Old Smokey. Got a bath the other day. Actually, she got like five baths. She got the perfume on, went to Atwoods, picked her up a little flea collar. She got some pills that you can give them like, I believe it's every day or every other day. And it kills the fleas instantly, bugs, mites, ticks, whatever. Kills them when they bite her. Ooh, look at that. It's pretty impressive after the good rain we had. Use the nesting box. Use, use the nesting box. Please, tell them. You gotta, this is your job. You gotta say, hey, use the box or get the ax. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I got one more thing to show you. Say bye bye, Smoke. Bye bye, Smokey. Bye bye. There you go. Now, I know some of y'all are still gonna be all. I can't believe you leave that little dog outside all by itself. But the, listen, I work from home. I'm home 24 seven. Case is always here. He's homeschooled. That dog is not alone. The dog is only alone when its eyes are closed and it prefers it. So, interesting story. If you saw this picture on Instagram a couple nights ago, that raccoon, I have her on camera slipping out of the traps. And if you guys didn't know, when you first order a trap, they're kind of slick and they can slide their hands out and you gotta, some people wax them, some dip them, some boil them, some paint them, all kinds of stuff. I would show you the tape, but I should show you the footage, the video. But the night that I got her, or I should say the night that I have her on camera escaping, there's another raccoon in the background, not so fortunate. So I can't, I don't, I just want to show it. There's no point. Uh, there's plenty of hunting and trapping channels if you want to go watch them, but I don't want to get that into this with this one. Um, I messaged a couple of trapping friends and I said, man, what do you do when a coon figures out how to get out of it? And he said, set two of them right beside each other. And I said, you mean that the raccoon will reach its hand inside of one? And then in an effort to get out, we'll reach inside the other. And he said, no, the raccoon will get stuck. Use a lot of energy getting out of the first one, get hungry, and then use this and then try and get the food out of the second one. 
and then wind up getting stuck in both, then it won't be able to get out. I was like, I don't believe you. He was right. I kid you not. I got it on camera. I'm not gonna show it either, but I set this trap last night at 8.30 p.m. and at 10.30, this raccoon had already made it and already got one hand stuck. Worked on this trap for almost two hours. The raccoon did all by itself. No other animals ever showed up in the footage. And then at 12.30, one o'clock in the morning, I guess it got hungry enough and it stuck its other hand in the other trap. And that was it. Yep. That's that. She gone. <laughs> not trespassers. So I don't have my tripod with me, so just bear with me on the angle. But one thing I have learned is check your fence lines, number one. But also before you start tugging and pulling branches off, make sure there's nothing up top that could also come down on top of you, which there is. This one right here, I'm not sure if that's in frame, but that's just hanging there. That's waiting. So. Right there. And when something's on your fence, but you've got a, oh, what was that show on the History Channel? Great American Loggers? <laughs> I don't think that's it. Anyway, they used to call these widow makers. So I used to watch the History Channel. I'm a huge history fan. So not, not that the History Channel is, you know, the guide for history because that's a little off sometimes, but. They used to call those widow makers. So um want to be really careful being underneath that. And I don't care about my fence. I care about my safety. So if reaching up there and knocking that down, I got to fix the fence again. So what? My dad is losing it at the camera right now, but I've seen you do crazier stuff. We're gonna leave that for now. It's off the fence. I can tighten this up a little bit later today, but it's about a hundred feet from here to where the cow's cross fence is. So they're nowhere near this. Right down there is where the trespasser came through. If you haven't seen that video, it's right here, here. There we go. 
Anyway, that's it, guys. I'm signing off. I'm going to go get my pole saw, probably do a little bit of work, and I may even do a pole saw update video because that one's really gained some traction lately. So I'll post it right here. No, it's over here. And then I'll do an update video at some point. So anyway, y'all be good. Thanks for watching. Deuces.